Patient today is on the day sheet scheduled for an extraction of a lower right first molar. Now, you've known this patient a long time. They've got a big square jaw, heavy masseters. They're a bruxer. This tooth has been in function for about 40 or 50 years. Widely divergent root system. You know this is not coming out with your standard elevator and 23 forcep. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift our mindset towards sectioning this tooth so we can take it out a little bit easier and a little bit more predictably. Now, how do we section lower molars? Well, the first thing to know is the anatomy of the tooth. So typically we've got our two roots, our mesial root and our distal root. There can, however, be accessory roots on these teeth as there could be on any other tooth. So you'll sometimes see a third root going in the furcation of those teeth and you will see this on a good PA or a pan. You need to identify that prior to sectioning because if you don't, it's gonna complicate things for you. Now, the next thing to mention would be get some form of protection in there for the patient's airway. So you want to have what, say, I would use, which would be the isodry or isolate system. You could use a sea sponge or laryngeal sponge to go in there, soak up the water, protect the tongue, and keep things isolated so the patient doesn't swallow any restorations that happen to pop out or any tooth structure that may flake away as we're sectioning through that tooth. Now, that's the next point. When you're a GP, usually you're using your typical setup to take these out. You may not have a separate motor to be using to section teeth. And so if you're doing that, you've likely got some water spray coming from your handpiece. Always, always, always turn the air off or use a rear vented handpiece like an impact air to make sure that you're not venting air into the surgical site. But also take into consideration the amount of water that you're using. So if you've got your water spray turned up like you're doing a crown prep, you're going to be drowning that patient. Now if you have the ISO dry in or the isolate system, it's suctioning for you and this maybe isn't a huge deal. But if you're not using that system and you've got some other form of protection back there like a gauze or a sponge, then you might be using too much water. So slow it down to a drip to keep this area wet and make sure that your burr is staying cool, but don't be drowning your patient. Next thing here is the type of irrigation to use. You can use water from your typical unit and the delivery system, that's okay. Ideally, you'd be using sterile saline that's more of an isotonic solution that's coming as external irrigation. Now, typically, you're going to find that on straight hand pieces that oral surgeons would be using. I like to use the 702 Burr which is what's in the handpiece right now. Now it's a little bit fatter burr. I like it because what happens is we're trying to eliminate this tooth. So we're trying to get rid of some tooth structure. If we're using anything skinnier than that, I find that sometimes you section through the roots here and you try to lever them out and elevate them out and they start to bump into one another and the path of withdrawal just isn't there. So the 702 gives you a nice amount of removal of tooth and bone to help to free up enough space to typically be able to deliver those roots roots out with minimal impedance from the adjacent side. Now when we start to section this tooth, what we're going to do is we're going to use our periosteal and we're going to reflect the gingiva on either side of the tooth. So get this buccal gingiva out of the way until you can identify where the furcation of that tooth is. Same thing here, we're going to go down on the lingual side, get the tissues out of the way. So again, you can see where the furcation would be because it's not always going to line up with that central groove of your tooth. So try to kind of look at underneath the gums to see where you need to be sectioning. Next thing that we do is we cut the crown off. Now some people will skip this step. I don't skip it and the reason is if you cut through here, sure enough you can get through the furcation most times. When you do and you then go to place your elevator in to split that tooth, it's difficult to concentrate your forces to the apical part of that tooth to propagate the crack through the tooth. And what often will happen is you'll end up twisting your elevator and you'll be applying too much pressure to the coronal portions of this tooth and it's gonna cause an incomplete split or a less than ideal split by pushing on one of these pieces of tooth and fracturing them down the root surface. So get rid of the upper part of this tooth. Everything above the height of contour is what I say because none of that is useful for elevating or your forceps. So keep everything kind of below the height of contour and do your initial cut directly through the tooth. Now you're gonna cut basically about two thirds of the way through here. Once you get through there from the buccal surface, you're gonna take your elevator, you're gonna insert it, and you're gonna tell the patient you'll hear a little pop here and you twist it and that crown is gonna snap right off.
now what you've got is access to the pulp chamber. So you can basically see now what your root system looks like and you get a good visualization for where you need to cut next. So if you have an endotreated tooth, this is great because the gutta perca is there and it's kind of like a target that you can aim between and you know that you're going to get the perfect section. Other than that, you'll still typically see where the pulp spaces would be and you can still section very, very nicely now with better visualization and less crown in the way. So you're going to continue to section that tooth and again you don't want to go all the way through the tooth because you don't want to puncture through this lingual plate here. So you want to go about two-thirds of the way through and you're going to have to note that these teeth are not straight up and down. Okay so if you're sectioning and you're going through here straight up and down you might think that you're about two-thirds of the way through but what you're actually doing is you're basically almost lined up with that lingual plate. So you need to take into consideration the tilt of that tooth. They're usually leaning inwards or medially. So you want to tilt your burr along with that so that you can section through that properly. The other thing to note about the angulation of your burr is that the roots here are typically offset by maybe about 10 to 15 degrees from the occlusal surface. So if you cut straight down here along this buccal groove or say where you think the furcation is, look at where that burr ends up. It's cutting right down into the mesial root of that tooth and that can cause some problems because it's going to weaken this mesial section of the tooth. You're going to try to elevate it out and this root tip is going to separate right here. So that's a bit of a headache to get out, especially when it's a mesial root tip because visualization is a little bit tougher when you're on the mesial aspect versus on the distal. Always, always, always cut the interradicular bone first. So make sure as you're cutting your section here, if there's widely divergent roots, don't be afraid to basically obliterate that bone in between those roots. Get as much of that bone out of there as you can to ensure that you can basically collapse either root now into the middle of that socket. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to cut down between these. You're going to take your elevator then once you're finished and you're going to elevate inwards. You're going to push inwards here to tip that root or collapse the root backwards. You can then do the same with the distal root. So you can elevate it inwards to lift it forwards and in toward the middle of the socket. If Barring all that, you've taken away a bunch of that bone, you still can't get those out for some reason. Maybe you can't get a good purchase to elevate that tooth. You can then use a 700 or 699 burr, make a slightly uh, thinner trough along the mesial aspect of the root or the distal aspect of the root, and then you can use your elevating luxator to get down in there to loosen that up and get a purchase to again collapse those roots into the center of the socket and then deliver them. So what I will use typically here as I am elevating those, and if I have a good elevation, maybe they're not quite coming out, but they're getting loose, I will also consider using a 74 forcep. And I have that right here to show you. It is the one here that's kind of a sideways facing forcep that grabs very nicely either section of that tooth. So it's got thinner beaks. I'll usually use it for premolar teeth, but these are essentially premolars once you've split them. So that's a great tool to use as well if you want to get a forcep on it to get that tooth out. Usually if your technique's okay and the tooth is uh, conducive to coming out, an elevator is going to work.